been posting on this channel for now eight or nine years and still our basic assumption, our basic fact, our basic principle has not been well understood by the audience. I don't know if it's my fault because I'm not presenting it properly or I don't know if maybe the fault lies on the other side that people aren't investigating it and researching it and practicing it, because if they did, they would immediately find out the truth. What is that truth? Consciousness is the absolute. I should make a slight change to that. Unconditioned awareness is the absolute. This is the absolute truth, the summum bonum the ultimate conclusion of all philosophical, religious, and meditative disciplines. Why do we assert this? Well, because it's observationally verifiable in real time, and it's true. Consciousness is the absolute. Everything is experienced and measured relative to consciousness. There's no getting around this. This is the way it is for everybody. Now, you know, dharma, dharma sar means the essence of dharma, and dharma means what is, the way it is, and why it is the way it is. So what is, is that consciousness is the absolute. The way it is, is that it appears in four flavors. Jagrat, or consciousness of the world. Svapna, or consciousness of dreams. Sushupti, or consciousness of the void. And Turiya, or unconditioned consciousness. Now, in Einstein's general theory of relativity, he states that every motion is relative in other words, it's only measurable in comparison with an observer who is assumed to be at rest. Einstein's very tricky. He snuck the idea of consciousness into his theory, which of course was subsequently proven to be absolutely correct. And he snuck the idea of consciousness into the observer. Now, if you ask a scientist, what is the observer? He usually talks about some kind of measuring instrument. But a measuring instrument in a lab is only a proxy for consciousness. Because un unless a being, a conscious being, reads the output of the measurement, it's meaningless. It has no context. Just to say that this machine put out a reading of such and such during an experiment is meaningless. Unless you already have a theory, an ontology, a terministic screen describing this context of the experiment. So Einstein is very tricky. He was a student of the wisdom of the East. Bhagavad Gita and many other esoteric books. And he knew very well that consciousness is the absolute. So he snuck it into his theory in calling it the observer. <laughs> but actually, without consciousness, the idea of his observer is meaningless. And note that the observer is assumed to be at rest and the motion of the observed is relative to the observer. So, 
What is consciousness? Consciousness is ultimately unconditioned awareness. That is unlimited, boundless, boundaryless, qualityless, unmanifest, pure being, bliss, and consciousness. Sat, chit, ananda. This is taught by the Vedas and Vedanta and the Upanishads and all the scriptures, bona fide Vedic scriptures based on them. So then, how do we get to this consciousness where we see the world, where we see ourselves as an individual, where we see divisions and boundaries and limitations in everything, where everything has qualities, a beginning and an end? This is because pure consciousness, Brahman, or God, or the Absolute, becomes covered. This is called the theory of Upadi. And we've talked about Upadi on this channel before. Upadi means a covering. Or sometimes it's called transformations of the mind. But what it really is, is ignorance. <laughs> the absolute consciousness becomes covered by ignorance. And so it appears to be bounded, limited. It appears to have a beginning and ending in time. It appears to have qualities. It appears to be consciousness belonging to an individual. It appears to be located in a body. It appears to be the thinker, the knower, the doer, the owner, the desirer, and the identity of the person. But all this is illusory, maya, because it covers over the original, pure, unconditioned awareness, without boundaries, timeless, unconditioned, unlimited, Brahman. So this is our platform, and we have posted this diagram, I don't know how many times, <laughs> hundreds of times, and still people don't seem to get it. But this is the solution to the problem of consciousness. Why is it called the large problem? Because the scientists don't want to accept that consciousness is the absolute. They don't want to accept that it's God. They don't want to accept that there's only one consciousness which manifests in a multitude of forms similar to the spectral colors manifesting in the facets of a gem or in the reflected light of the sun or moon in many puddles or water pots. These are different theories that have been advanced to explain how consciousness becomes conditioned by its container or its apparent container. Actually, consciousness cannot be contained. And that is why, even at the death of the body, consciousness continues unbroken. Only the object of consciousness changes. So these are things that we know through meditation. In fact, they can only be known through meditation through practice. The understanding is the first step. Understanding the context, the ontology of consciousness. Then from there, one can simply observe. Because everyone has to go through these four stages of consciousness. <laughs> Jagra, Svapna, Sushupti, and Turiya. In fact, everyone is already in Turiya, and the other conditioned states of consciousness simply manifest within it. And if one is very observant, at the time of changing from one kind of consciousness to the other, one can observe this Turiya. So this is the yogic path, or this is the path of meditation. This is the Buddha's teaching also, that by introspection and observation, one can observe the movements of consciousness and ultimately by penetrating the conditioning 
uh, the ignorance, the upadis, come to the pure origin of consciousness, which is the self, with a capital S. That means God, enlightenment, nirvana, self-realization. All these things are simply terms for unconditioned consciousness. So when we experience unconditioned consciousness, Satchit Ananda, eternity, pure consciousness, and bliss. Uh, once we see that, once we experience that, then we can never go back to the conditioned platform of understanding consciousness to be a triple, a triple divided into the uh, seer, the seen, and the seeing. That's our normal or default state of being. But in the state of self-realization, these three all become one and are realized to simply be appearances or apparencies, like a mirage in the desert. Uh, we may see what appears to be a lake of water in the desert, but actually it's not there. It's simply an appearance due to the refractive index of the temperature boundaries in the atmosphere over the sand. So in the same way, what we appear to observe as individual consciousness, conditioned consciousness, is really an appearance due to the boundaries between the different stages of consciousness. Try to understand huh? this reflection or refraction of pure consciousness in the facets of the gem, or in the reflections in the puddles, or in the image of the lake in the desert, are only appearances. They have a beginning and an end. They are due to conditions. And when those conditions change, the mirage disappears. This is known as nirvana or nibbana in the Buddha's teaching that a candle or any fire is the result of certain conditions. And when those conditions change, the fire, we say, goes out. Well, where does it go? It doesn't go any place. It simply ceases to exist. And in the same way, once we observe the actual cause of the different states of consciousness, they disappear or rather, they no longer appear as actualities, but we see them as they are. Just like if we hide backstage and watch a magician perform, suddenly we can see all the hidden trap doors, the strings, the rubber bands, the mechanisms huh, that allow him to perform his illusions. And in this way, even though we still see the same tricks, we know because we understand the mechanism of how they are illusory. So this is the purpose of Dharma Sar, the essence of Dharma, is to expose you to these truths and educate you in the ontology of consciousness so that you can observe it in yourself and attain that greatest reward, that greatest benefit of all human life, pure enlightenment. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti. Aum.